Here's a fun project you can print on any 3D printer that you can take any 3D print and twist it. Here's a chep cube, which is normally just square, and I've twisted this thing with one simple app. And I'll explain it all on today's Film It Friday. This video is brought to you by MicroSwiss. The app I'm referring to is the STL Twister by Andrew Sink. Just go to andrewsync.github.io slash stl-twister and you can use it right in your browser. Now it includes this gnome that you can practice on and there's a low, medium, and high twist range. So in low you can twist it and his head goes back and forth and his body moves with it. In the medium range you can go a bit further. So you, he can twist all the way around to look behind himself and then go in the other direction. High gives you the ability to really twist it around. He can twist all the way around until he's looking forward again, but it really twists the whole body around. Now at any point you can click on reset position and it'll put it back to where you started. You also have rotate controls. You click on that and now you can move the model in the X, Y, and Z direction before you twist it. So it gives you a lot of options to make really unique twisted STL files. Now when you're done twisting, you click on export.stl, then you can download the file, slice it, and 3D print it. Now if you want to replace the GNOME, click on Upload STL, choose the STL file you want, in this case I chose a CHEP cube, and now I can twist this CHEP cube any way I want. I started with medium, but that twists it too far. Now I could stop in between, don't have to go all the way, but I decided to use low and twist it till it ended, and I like what I see. Then I clicked on Rotate Controls, spun it around. I like it, so I think I'm going to print this. I clicked on Export STL, and it downloaded to my computer. I brought it into Orca Slicer, but I realized it's going to be too small, so I actually want to upsize this to 200%. So I clicked on the model, then I clicked on the Scale icon, and I can change the X to 200, and all X, Y, and Z will change to 200%. So now I need to slice this. I'm actually going to slice it with a K1 Max, and also the K1C. So uh, this is the K1 Max at a 0.24 layer height. It said 37 minutes and 52 seconds. And this is what it'll look like as it builds. You can see it twisting as it prints. Now my K1C actually has a MicroSwiss hot end in it. And speaking of MicroSwiss, MicroSwiss offers their Flowtech hot end and they've got a lot of different varieties for all different printers, including the bamboo printers. But the nice thing is, they all use the same nozzle, so you could swap it amongst all your different printers if these are installed. And if you need spare parts, they've got those too. So if you're looking for a new hot end, check out micro-swiss.com. So the white one here was done on the K1C, and it looks really good. You can see all the detail, and I like the way this thing twists. Now the K1 Max was not quite as good with the stock hot end, but it still looks nice, and I love this color red. If you want to play with the STL Twister, I'll put a link to it in the description below. It seems like you could really use this for stop motion videos. If anyone does that, let me know about it in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo down there and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.